watching UATV News. My name is Ina Kosinska. Good evening. A new anti-record has been set in Ukraine, 57 deaths per day. The previous maximum happened on September 3rd, when 54 patients died. Yesterday, the coronavirus infection was diagnosed in 2,411 Ukrainians. The majority of cases were reported in Kyiv, Lviv, Kharkov, Zakarpatya and Odessa regions. The Ministry of Health is concerned about the dynamics of hospitalizations over the past month. We are now approaching the figure of 8,000 hospitalized people, and in comparison, for example, with July, this number has increased by more than two and a half times. As of mid-July, the relevant number was three and a half thousand. Advisors of the Normandy Four countries' leaders will meet on September 11th. This was announced by the President of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, during his visit to the Sumy region. Head of the state assured that Ukraine will do everything to preserve this ceasefire. Our correspondent finds out if the truth is still observed in Donbass. To preserve the truce at all costs, according to President Volodymyr Zelensky, despite provocations from illegal armed groups, Ukraine will continue to implement the Minsk agreements for the Ukrainian military not to die in the east of our country any longer. We will do everything to retain the ceasefire in order to avoid a large number of injured and killed. I don't see any other option how to save people's lives. It is the escalation of the situation in Donbass after 42 days of silence that will become the main topic of the meeting of advisors to the Normandy Four Countries leaders, said the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, Mitro Kuleba. The summit is to take place this Friday, September 11. The meeting remains on schedule. Ukraine is preparing for it and killing of our soldiers will definitely be among the issues that will be discussed. We absolutely retain the backing of the international community, which supports our idea that the ceasefire must continue, we have to look for a diplomatic way to settle and deoccupy our territories. In addition to peace in Donbass, during the upcoming summit, security measures on the contact line will also be discussed, in particular demining of territories and disengagement of troops. Ukraine will raise the question of further disengagement of forces and equipment, as well as the issues of establishing a continuous ceasefire without any casualties and the creation of a buffer zone of security. The Russian Federation will, as usual, raise political topics like amending the constitution, amnesty law and so on. The current truce has become the longest during six years of hostilities in the Donbass, the UN says, and they call on both sides of the conflict to lay down their arms for the safety of the Ukrainians living in the conflict zone. Six weeks have passed since the ceasefire came into force on July 27. This is the longest period of relative silence in eastern Ukraine since the beginning of the conflict. The UN Secretary General's call to all sides involved to abide by the agreed terms of the ceasefire and to focus on protecting the civilian population. According to the Ukrainian intelligence, the illegal armed groups used the ceasefire to strengthen their positions. Last week, the enemy carried out intensive measures to build new trenches in the Novoidarsky, Severodonetsk, Bakhmut, Avdiiv, Katorets, Kurakhov and Volnovakha directions. In addition, the occupiers continued to set up mine explosive barriers using anti-personnel and anti-tank mines. The situation on the contact line escalated on September 6 after the death of a Ukrainian soldier. Violation of the ceasefire agreements is also associated with threats from the leader of the so-called DPR, Denis Pushilin. Earlier, he stated that he had ordered illegal armed groups to launch an offensive against Ukrainian positions on the 7th of September. Yesterday, he postponed the attack to the 9th. The reason was the alleged erection of new fortifications for the armed forces of Ukraine near the village of Shumy. Although the OSCE representatives denied the fact of such construction, Artem Holub, Kiev, U. TV news. Another disappearance in Belarus. A representative of the leader of the Belarusian opposition, Svetlana Tikhanovskaya, Antonina Konovalova, is not getting in touch. It is unknown where she can be. The day before, a member of the Coordinating Council, Maria Kalesnikova, disappeared. She has not been in touch for the second day in a row. Ukraine State Board of God Stories confirmed that members of the Belarusian Coordination Council Anton Randinkov and Ivan Kravtsov have been allowed into the country. The opposition is were not detained despite the reports made by the state media of Belarus. It is also known that they have a residence permit in Ukraine. 
якщо говорити про пані Колес. Speaking of Ms. Kolesnikova, this person did not come to any checkpoint in Ukraine to pass border control. Those two citizens who arrived at one of the checkpoints within Kyiv region, they passed all the necessary procedures of border control. They allegedly tried to take Maria Kolesnika out of Belarus by force, but she tore up her passport. Accordingly, border guards could not allow the oppositionists to enter the territory of Ukraine. I'm so glad that Masha replayed all the cunning plans and emerged victorious from this situation. I don't know what happened, but I willingly believe that she tore up her passport and jumped out of the car. In any case, they did not succeed. Now they say that Masha has been detained. Okay, it means that our state bears responsibility for her, and we will need to sort out the arrest now. Meanwhile, Belarusian border guards voiced their own version of Maria Kolesnikova's arrest. Rodnenkov, Kravtsov and Kolesnikova, in a BMW car having passed customs border control, moved towards Ukraine. However, later on approaching the border guard, the car accelerated sharply, creating a threat to the life of the servicemen. Kolesnikova found herself outside the vehicle. In fact, she was pushed out of it, after which the vehicle continued to move in the direction of Ukraine. Maria Kolesnikova did not plan to leave Belarus under any circumstances. Maxim Znak, a lawyer and member of the Coordinating Council, told Tudbai News Edition. After the situation with Olga Kovalkova, the four of us separately, myself, Rodnenkov, Kolesnikova and Kravtsov, discussed what to do if we were offered the same choice as Latushko and Kovalkova to leave the country or fall under repression. And Maria Kolesnikova had a clear position that under no circumstances she would leave the country only by force. At least the night before yesterday she was absolutely sure of it. The presidential candidate of Belarus, Svetlana Tikhanovskaya, called for international pressure on official means and the introduction of sanctions against the country's leadership. I'm speaking to you today in order to draw your attention to an absolutely unacceptable situation that has unfolded in my country in recent weeks. Peaceful protesters are being illegally detained, beaten and imprisoned. Opposition figures are held under trumped up charges, intimidated and threatened or expelled from the country altogether. Only yesterday, one of the leaders of the peaceful protests Maria Kolesnikova was kidnapped. In Belarus, they came with searches to the editor of the media outlet, which was the first to report on the abduction of Maria Kolesnikova. It published eyewitness accounts yesterday, reported by Ksenia Buhai, UAT News. Meanwhile, Belarusian opposition activists Ivan Kravtsov and Anton Rodnenkov arrived in Ukraine. They are in safe now. At a press conference in Kyiv, they told about how they managed to leave Belarus. They took my passport. A man approached to me and asked which Schengen visas I have. I only had an Estonian Schengen visa, which means that I cannot enter either Poland or Lithuania or even Estonia due to the coronavirus. And for the officers of Special Forces, Ukraine remained the best of all the options where they could send us. The state approved the procedure for providing social housing to the internally displaced persons who will be able to get their new homes and what documents to submit. Vlada Turkan knows more. Oleg and his family had to leave their home in Donetsk six years ago. For over a year now, they have been living in Kyiv at their relative's place. To rent an apartment in the capital costs a lot, so Oleg decided to exercise his right for social housing. The Housing Commission considered our application rather quickly. It didn't take much paperwork and they made a decision to put us on the list before March 11 this year. Since September, the state has simplified the procedure for obtaining social housing for internally displaced persons and reduced the list of documents required for registering of applicants and obtaining of accommodation. The procedure got simplified by the fact that an assessment certificate on the property located in the occupied territory is not any longer required. Naturally, there is no way to estimate this property. Also, applicants do not need to submit their certificate on absence of other property in Ukraine. So the whole process is now simple. The certificate is extracted from an electronic database and the application gets registered automatically. According to the Minister for the Development of Communities and Territories of Ukraine, half a million internally displaced persons are in need of accommodation. 
At the moment, only 505 people have registered for obtaining of social housing. There are several categories of people who can enjoy their right to get their new homes provided by the state. Internally displaced persons who own no other housing on the territory controlled by the government of Ukraine, people whose housing had been destroyed or damaged to the condition unsuitable for living in Donetsk and Luhansk regions, citizens for whom social housing isn't the only place of residence, those who have the right for improvement of their living conditions, people whose average monthly income for the previous year made less than the cost of rent and the minimum living wage established by law. Internally displaced persons can be removed from the housing register only if their income increases considerably. Eviction from social accommodation is possible in the case of a six-month non-payment solely. Vlada Surkan, Alexander Bugai, UATV. Wooden toys and a famous local pie may be included into the list of intangible cultural heritage of Ukraine. Unique techniques and recipes have been cherished in the Yavaru district of the Lviv region for several centuries. Our correspondents visited the craftsmen. This is how a Yavoriv toy is being born. Yavoriv used to be famous for its painted wooden statues and dolls four centuries back. Here we produce 38 types of handmade toys. For example, this is a bird. A bird on wheels, it's called a bird with waving wings. Before covering with paint, the workpiece is being dried, polished and primed. The color of the base remains unchanged from the very beginning of the craft. Now I'm starting to color the Yavoriv toy. Before coloring, you need to lay the base. In the ancient times, craftsmen painted it either completely yellow or with such strips. The elements of the picture are traditionally red or green, while the blotches are white. Modern masters prefer to paint toys with watercolors. Natural dyes were used in the past. Painting is made in accordance with a special technique, which is called verbivka, in the form of willow twigs and leaves, because in ancient times people of Yavoriv district took everything that surrounded them as a source of inspiration. Those who have been to Yavoriv have certainly tasted a unique local pie. Its peculiarity is the filling of potatoes, onions and buckwheat. It is best served when the pie is cut into pieces like this. Well, and of course, it tastes best when the sour cream, but also you can serve the pie with a mushroom sauce or meat jelly. Yavoriv toys and pie this year can be assigned to statues of an intangible cultural heritage of Ukraine. This will help preserve traditions and make local crafts and recipes even more popular in the world. Reported by Nick Starkov for UATV News. That's all what we have for you this hour. More updates on our website, Facebook, Twitter and YouTube pages. Stay safe and good night.